Hi everybody, my name is Katie and I am Empowering Astrology and this is my first Instagram Live and I am trying to get my face out there a little bit more since most of you pretty much know me from my Facebook page, now my Instagram page, um, my website empoweringastrology.com. So I wanted to take this opportunity to do a few things. One is to talk about the astrology of June in brief, since we are coming up to uh, a new month in a few days. Um, I also wanted to uh, talk a little bit about my philosophy and my style of consultations and use that as a segue to talk about three charts. Um, we have three winners. I, if this is your first time tuning in live to me, um, I did a, uh, I guess like a, a free quick giveaway for the quick readings and had about 85 people give me their information. So I trust you know that this was a random number uh, generated uh, winners. So if you didn't get picked, I'm very sorry. You can blame the Google random number generator thing. Um, but I wanna do this more frequently, perhaps once a month, maybe more. So there will be more chances to be able to win a quick reading. So first, let's talk about the astrology of June of 2019. And June is pretty much Gemini season. Right now the sun's in Gemini. Um, so we are coming into what's called like, it's like the end of a season. You know, Gemini is what's called a mutable sign. Mutable signs, they prepare us for a new season. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are gonna be going into summer starting on June 21st. If you are listening to me from um, Australia, New Zealand, or Asia, or in the Southern Hemisphere, then you will be going into winter. But, so there's this idea that we are kind of straddling two seasons in June. And astrology is about really, uh, it's like a, a, like a template for living. It's a calendar for living. And when the sun is in Gemini, the sun is, let's say, shining through this kind of prism of communication, um, talking, interacting. Here we are. This is very Gemini. I have a Gemini moon, by the way. So here in Gemini season, it's about learning. It's about maybe taking classes. It's about how we use our voice and how we communicate. Um, and it's also a time when we think about the choices that we make. For some of you may know that Gemini is the sign of the twins. So this idea that it can be a left or a right, an up or down, a yes or a no. Um, so during Gemini season, it's very important to be very conscientious of what choices that we're making because that, those choices are what really set us up for the coming months you know when we go into cancer season and beyond and i think that on a deeper level with gemini season we're trying to understand the wisdom of our choices and so so i just saw somebody who said hi from australia hi <laughs> um it's it's interesting i have um you know, I'm, I'm here in New York City, but I have, I feel like a, like a group of you all down in Australia, especially in the Sydney and Melbourne area. Some of my oldest clients are actually out of Melbourne. So one of these days, I will get down to Australia and anybody that knows me in my personal life knows that I love to travel. Um, so anyway, that's, I'm getting on a tangent. So, and actually not a tangent because June is all about travel. Why is that? You know, we have a, what's called a new moon on uh, June 3rd and that new moon is in Gemini and when we have a new moon it kind of sets us up for the next four weeks it says okay over the next four weeks we are focusing and creating from the prism of Gemini and Gemini is a sign I don't know if any of you are Gemini's happy birthday by the way or know a Gemini but it's a sign that needs a lot of information it needs a lot of stimuli it needs um, places to go people to see because it's a sign that it needs to kind of learn and take things in and gather so this is a season to travel you know, Gemini is typically a sign that wants to travel shorter distances so maybe this new moon that we have it's about getting out there going on road trips getting out into the neighborhood exploring being curious picking up a book 
um, maybe starting an Instagram live. Um, and then when we get to the full moon in Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is what's called Gemini, Gemini's polarity, um, there is a full moon, it's on, oh my God, I'm like blanking, I think it's like on the 14th, I'm sorry, I should have written it down. Um, it's two weeks after the June 3rd um, new moon. And when we have that full moon, the light is now shining on the sign of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is also travel, it's also education, but it's on a much bigger level. So maybe we're thinking about foreign travel, maybe we're thinking about seeing the world. You know, Gemini is very much like what's in front of my face, that kind of a thing. But for Sagittarius, it's you know, Gemini's polarity. We need to see something bigger, we need to go bigger, we need to about philosophy and wisdom and knowledge so really pay attention to the themes that are coming in for you throughout June I think with the Sagittarius full moon and I think also with um, there's something called Jupiter square Neptune throughout June and I think there's a little bit of an existential edge to what's happening in June which means what does this all mean um, it also, we're, we're trying to figure out our lives, trying to figure out our existence. Maybe we're looking at different ways of thinking, different philosophies, different religions. How do we answer these much bigger questions? And that's very much in the purview of Sagittarius. So that's um, pretty much a theme that's very woven into June. And then I think after the, we go into cancer season on the 21st of June, so it's a new beginnings, new time, um, we are moving away from the energy of Gemini and going into home and family. And so astrology teaches us that there's a time and place for everything. So it's very busy probably the first couple of weeks of June and then as we go into the latter part of June I think there's going to be kind of a quieting down. But another point that I wanted to make is that June uh, sets us up for what's called eclipse season and you may or may not know this in astrology but every six months we have uh, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses so last time we had eclipses was in January so six months later July we are going to have a solar eclipse on July 2nd and a lunar eclipse on July 16th and so it's important to know that we are, let's say, in the gate um, for something in June. In fact, sometimes uh, you can see an eclipse story come about even a month in advance. So in June, we might have things coming in and out of our lives, and that's what eclipses do. Things come in and out of our lives during eclipse seasons. We start a new job, we leave a job, we move. Um, we get into a new relationship, we end a relationship. This is idea that when we get into eclipse season, the, the, the stage is rearranging, the set is being repositioned, the different actors are coming in and out. Um, so I know that, and this is a little bit of a technical point, but Mars is activating the eclipse degrees in, um, throughout June. So. I would also pay attention to kind of what's coming into your life in June. What are the choices that you're making? Where are you going? Who are you meeting? Where are you traveling? But also these bigger questions of faith and meaning. Um, I do want to add that I am going to be doing a webinar on the upcoming eclipses. And this um, webinar is going to be on June 25th. The details are on my website. And if you're on Instagram afterwards, you can just click on events and the link in bio and that will give you the link to more information about this webinar and so if you are a aries cancer capricorn um, or a libra the, the summer oh, well, it's not really the summer for everybody but july will be potentially a big time of maybe your life is making a different turn maybe some doors are opening and closing so um so that's kind of the bigger overview of June and I wanted to segue into the free readings that I did so I know some many of you sent me your information thank you very much and I wanted to use this opportunity to talk about the type of work that I do 
because I'm not, even though you know, I'm putting a lot of content out there and it's a lot about the what's going on right now, I think when I'm working with people, it's very much about how do I bring somebody through a threshold? How do I open up um, new spaces for them? How do I help them to see their lives in different ways? And this is about uh, looking at the different themes of the chart, what's happening right now, and what's opening for you, and how can you best work with what the astrology is telling you what time it is, because that's what astrology is. It's a way of understanding time, symbolic time, metaphoric time. So I have three winners. Um, my first winner is Christina, and she was born on the 6th of November, 1978, actually right by my birthday. Um, interesting enough, of the people that won today, it was a lot of, uh, a lot of fixed energy. Um, actually, all three of them have Leo rising, which I promise this is completely random. But for whatever reason, all three of these people had Leo rising, which I can understand because right now the what are called the fixed signs of Leo, Taurus, uh, Scorpio, and Aquarius, they're getting um, a lot of let's say the seismic plates of your life are shifting beneath your feet. Why is that? Because since March, March 6th to be more precise, um, the planet Uranus went into Taurus and the planet Uranus will be in the sign of Taurus. It's almost like the hand of a clock that's pointing towards Taurus for the next seven years. And so there's a particular part of your life and if you are a Leo, if you are a Taurus or an Aquarius or a Scorpio, the, the, that part of your life is, is more important than, let's say, others. So you may, if you are one of those four signs, you might feel like your life is taking a turn, maybe a radical turn. Maybe you feel like you need to reinvent yourself. So, you know, for Christina, I mean, she's Leo rising. She's a, she's a Scorpio. She was born on, on November 6th and she has Leo rising. And so if you're listening, Christina, or listening on the replay, um, the first thing that really jumped out was this time in your life where maybe a lot is being asked of you to change. You also have a moon in Aquarius. So it's like the four directions of your life or these kind of like these major points of your life are really getting activated by Uranus this year, next year in particular. So this may translate into changes in relationship, changes where you live, um, changes in how you see yourself. But the, the thing that really jumped out actually, I think going into these eclipses this summer, um, is that there might be, there's something going on with career. So I don't know if you are thinking about making a career change, um, if you, want to go in a different direction. Um, I don't know that this even talks about even needing to make a move, which is not related to career. Um, but this is probably July is going to be a very big month for you. So I would see what opportunities are coming in in July if you, you know, because I say for Leo, you know, um, even though you're not a Leo, you're a Scorpio, but your chart runs on Leo time because you have Leo rising. Um, you might be needing to reinvent your career or the direction in your life. And this is true for all Leos, you know, if you're listening or if you have Leo rising. Um, so, you know, I say to you, because where's your Venus? You know, your Venus is also, your Venus is in Scorpio. Um, your Venus is at 15 Scorpio, your son's at 14 Scorpio. So something's happening. And so I would say to you, Christina, if you have been mulling over wanting to make a big change in your professional life, like what is that? What would that look like? If you could do anything, no matter how crazy, what would you actually do? Um, because something's, something's happening right now. Um, and I think that uh, that also might kind of speak to some of these four directions of your life. Maybe there's there's a move this going into the next six months, especially around the, the July. Um, I also add for Christina that this is a little bit of a technical point. The progressed moon is coming out of the 12th, so the next few months are really about you um, coming into yourself and having this powerful new beginning. So that is Christina.
And my second person is Lacey. She was born on May 5th, 1981. So Lacey, if you're listening, you have Taurus Sun, you have Leo rising, another Leo rising, and the moon in Gemini, just like me. So you, it's interesting, and, I, and I, it's no, I don't think it's no coincidence that you're gonna get, you know, even though it's randomly selected these three charts, that there is this reoccurring theme. And I've been seeing this with my clients lately, is that the thing about Taurus is it's a sign that wants to preserve. It's a sign that wants to stay in its comfort zone. And I think what's being really asked of Taurus right now is to make some radical leaps or radical changes or leaps of faith. It's a sign that needs to get out of its rut. And so if there's anything in your life, uh, Lacey, where you feel like you are stuck in a rut, use this time, use this time like as a permission to do something different. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna be silly here for a moment, but like if, if doing something different means changing your hair or changing how you look, um, that might be one way. If doing something different means being brave, being brave to do the thing that you've always wanted to do. Um, because there is a sense of needing to reinvent yourself, Lacey. I mean, this is going to be a theme over the coming um, probably four years, if I had to guesstimate. Um, the way that your chart is oriented, Lacey, you have what's called an interception where your sun is. This is a little bit of a technical astrology point. Um, so the sun, even though it's high up in the chart because you were born near noon, um, it doesn't get a chance to really shine. I don't, this is just my interpretation. So how do you get a chance to shine? Um, and sometimes we are afraid to shine and the thing about astrology and why the sun is so important in astrology is that the sun gives life to the chart. The sun is not the most important thing in the chart. I think the sun is as important as the moon, um, but the sun brings life to the chart. And if we are not being our sun, whether we are a Taurus or a Scorpio or a Leo, then we're diminishing our light in some way. So this may be a time, Lacey, where the things that have maybe held you back or diminished your light need to go. Whether you make that change yourself or somebody else uh, helps you to do it. So I think that the kind of the, you know, the craziness of Uranus and Taurus is that the things that we have not been, um, or the things that we've been previously attached to that maybe we're not so attached to anymore. And so there's, I think, a time where you really are getting into the heart of who you are over this seven year period um, while Uranus is in Taurus. Um, interesting enough, Uranus in Taurus will also make what's called a square to your nodes into next year. And so when a major planet, you know, and Uranus is an outer planet, it moves very slowly, um, squares a node. Um, this is a one of those times in your life when you, you'll look back on 2019, 2020, and you'll be like, oh wow, that's when this happened. This is when I had to do this. This is when I had to go into a, a very different direction. Um, and so because your North Node is in Leo, you know, you're here to be Leo. You're here to really find your voice, you find your creativity, to find your self-expression. So really allow uh, Uranus to really open you up. Um, it's, I will say that for everybody, as we go into January of 2020, um, Pluto and Saturn are going to be conjunct in Capricorn throughout uh, 2020. And I'm really sensing that that is almost like a wrecking ball energy. And so there are some walls that we all have to tear down in some way, and we can't limit ourselves anymore. So again, if you are, you know, you, we all have a sun somewhere in our chart. Even if we were born towards midnight when the sun is at the bottom of the chart and, and at its most hidden, you have to shine your light. So Lacey, shine your light. It is, it is your destiny. It is your destiny to be you. I mean, it's everybody's destiny to be themselves, but I think you in particular Lacey, that's what's really being asked of you right now because your chart is mostly 
um, what's called fixed energy. And I would pay attention to the lunar eclipse on um, July 16th. Um, that lunar eclipse is going to touch on career and home. So I don't know if that's going to kind of kick into gear this, this need to uh, maybe do something different with your professional life. And sometimes it doesn't have to be going in a completely new direction, um, but that can mean um, needing to do something that gets you moving in a different direction, um, even if it's not like a completely different career. So my third lucky winter winner winter winner um, is Donna, and Donna was born October twenty eighth, nineteen sixty five, and when you know Donna is also Leo rising. No, what are the odds? Um, and Donna, you know her son is in Scorpio, so another Scorpio son Leo rising, um, whereas T Lacey previously was a. Uh, was a Taurus. Um, you know, it's important to note that, the, like I said, the fixed signs, they're, they're getting a lot of pushes to make some big changes. And look, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Scorpio, and normally I'm the last person to turn on a live feed and start talking to people on the internet. But this is what the time is. This is what's being asked of us, is to do things that we wouldn't typically do. So your know, Scorpio is a sign that likes to hold back, maybe not be seen as much. And I think for Donna, if you're listening or watching later, there's something going on about identity in the chart. Um, so meaning, what, is that, what does that mean, identity? So the chart is talking about how this time in particular, there's this, a need to almost like figure out who you really are. It doesn't matter how old you are, um, but you know, with Uranus opposing your son, um, this has already happened. Um, Uranus will, has already made what's called the first opposition. It will retrograde um, throughout the latter part of this year, and then in 2020, it'll make its final opposition. I find the Uranus opposition to the sun, it's almost like a coming out. You know, Uranus is a planet, and I keep saying change with Uranus, but I think we really need to understand that Uranus wants authenticity. So Uranus, whatever is not authentic to who we are in our lives, um, it needs to it needs to change, it needs to it needs to come out, um, and so there is this process that's happening it's ongoing this year and into next year where what and because your son is in the what's called the third house I'm wondering if it has a lot to do with voice being heard um, communicating um, but this is a really a fundamental time where if we were having this conversation let's say a year from now it might be quite obvious what has you know been asked of you by Uranus to, to change and to transform. So I would say to you, like whatever you can do to uh, be more visible or to have your voice heard, um, maybe this has to do with education and writing because it's the third house as well. Um, so maybe you're taking classes, maybe there's a sense of needing to, you know, because Uranus is in the ninth, open up the way that you see the world. You know, maybe you've seen the world in a particular way, but now it's time to see it in a very different way. Um, yeah, and also you have the Saturn and Pluto transiting your fifth house right now, and you also have the interception, what's called the fifth house. So something, and this has been going on for a while, um, something is about you being very serious about your talents, I don't know how you make your living. Um, if 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 communication, <clears throat> excuse me, if communication or teaching, because um, you do have Venus, your career planet in Sagittarius, um, is part of what you do. Um, but there's something about you. There's a theme in the chart right now about you taking your talents more seriously. You taking yourself more seriously. Um, your North Node is in, in Gemini, so this is kind of 
I think underscoring what I was saying earlier about like kind of changing the way you see yourself or changing the way you see the world because when the north node of the moon is in Gemini your path forward in life is to see the see life or you know get new information get new ideas because you've had past lives where you you I always say with Gemini south node is like be okay with being wrong um, and, and, I, and I say this as somebody who has a, a stellium in Sagittarius where, you know, I'm right is practically, uh, you know, what I always want to say. But um, I think with that North Node and Gemini, it's like it's okay to maybe that you, there's other ways in which to see things, other ways to get information. Um, your chart is mostly fixed and mutable. You're, you're not really getting the, let's say, the cardinal energies of these eclipses. Um, but... The, the North Node right now with those is in Cancer, which is what's called your 11th house. So I think if you're having eclipses bringing things in the 11th house, it's time for new friends, new communities, um, new connections. And so I really, really uh, use this time wisely. I, I also see that you um, your progressed sun's going to go into Capricorn in a year. So you're on the cusp of, you're kind of coming to the end of a 30 year story where you have expressed who you are through these Capricorn energies. And I find that when the progressed sun goes into a new sign, which it only happens once every 30 years, um, you're going into a time when you get to express yourself very differently. And Capricorn was, is what's called a cardinal sign. So it's a new phase of life that you're coming into. And so maybe with these Uranus transits and maybe with the Saturn and Pluto as well, um, it's really preparing you for 2020, which seems like it's a, it's, a, it's a new time in your life in some way, symbolically, maybe quite literally. Um, so those are my, my three winners. And um, I wanted to have a chance to interact with you all more because like I said, it typically is more one-sided. So if you don't follow me already, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm here obviously on Instagram. Um, please sign up for my newsletter. Again, you can find the link in the link in bio after this video ends because I will always put out information first there. So you can learn about the next Instagram live. You can, um, if I'm doing a free reading, you can send your information in again. Um, and also you can also subscribe to updates on Instagram. So. Please continue to join, and I'm really um, sorry. I'm just looking at some of the uh, different uh, comments. the The second winner was um, was a woman named Lacey. Um, so again, so lovely to connect with you all for the first time here. It's an Aries moon, um, and I look forward to connecting with you all in the future. Okay, bye.